Happy days, my fantastic artistic friends. Are you ready to do a big waterfall today? Good stuff. Now, you can see on the canvas I've coated the bottom two thirds in black acrylic primer. And I've allowed that to dry completely. I've done a squiggly line, at, you know, and, and then painted just below that. Above is just normal white primed canvas. In the black parts, I've, I've coated it, once it's dry, I've coated it in, in, in a thin layer of, of Prussian blue, a little bit of phthalo blue, some, some Van Dyke brown, and a little bit of liquid clear. That's all on the black part of the canvas. That's still wet, okay? The top part, just normal Bob Ross uh, liquid white. And now, as you can see, I've just put a little bit of phthalo blue up in the sky, and we're going to tweak in a nice little sky, just something nice and warm. Thalo blue is, is is a lot more warmer and kinder and and, and, and more 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 sky looking more 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 beautifully warmer. That's the that's the word warmer. It's a warmer blue than than Prussian blue. Okay, so like the the note says on the screen, stick around because there's something special at the very end of the video that that I want you to see and. At some point in the video as well, we're going to get onto a little bit of subscriber art as well. I've had a, I've had a absolutely stunning picture sent in by one of, one of the subscribers, and it's amazing. But we'll get onto that in a bit. But at the very end of the video, we can see something magical happen. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll enjoy. Okay, so with a little tiny bit of um, like a lavender colour mixed up with uh, Elizabeth Crimson and. And, and thalo blue we just put the um, the shadows of some clouds we'll have some clouds over over this waterfall and on top of that we can put some pure titanium white paint now you can make clouds in in lots and lots of different ways you, you can put the the white fluffy parts of the clouds up up in the sky first and then the shadows underneath or you can you make them all one color or you can paint them with a knife. If you've watched me paint before, which I'm sure some of you have done, you'll have seen me make clouds. There's, there's as many ways to make clouds as there is to make trees. So it's, it's all about finding your individuality about it. And clouds like like the legendary Bob Ross said, uh, clouds are one of the most freest things in nature. It's like nobody apart from Mother Nature tells a cloud where to go. It's quite true. So then what we'll do, with once we've finish putting those little highlights on these clouds we'll blend the two colors together okay so here we go with a really soft soft tiny brush this is almost similar to a makeup brush but it's it's not it's um, it's a proper art brush it's possibly pony hair okay and it's it really soft you can go right over this thick oil paint without making mush making mud muck mixing you know and we can just tease the colours together and, and create a nice blended effect. It really is, it really is gorgeous. And you can do this as soft as you can. Keep it as soft as you want it to keep. There we go. There we go, just like that. Like I've said before in, in many videos, the paint colours are in the description. All you need to go down is, is, look, is look in the description, read it and that... The full range of the palette I use is, is down there, as well as the, the size of the brushes and the um, and, and other utensils. Obviously, we need a, a palette and and uh, an easel and canvases. Does help sometimes, doesn't it? All right. So those clouds were so good. We'll paint another one. So look, I'm painting the highlight now of the cloud in there, and then what we'll do is we'll come back in and we'll paint. The shadow of the cloud. So this is opposite way around this time. So the effects are very similar. But just done a different way around. Individuality. That's all it is. We've had a little bit more of the crimson in that one. It's, it's looking a little bit more, bit more purplier. So again, gives a different variety into the painting. Again, we'll, we'll just tease these two colours together. Very soft. Very soft, this brush. It's grand stuff. It really is. There we go. There we go. Then we'll start to work at some point on our big, big waterfall. I think I was left a comment once upon a time 
I've ever thought about doing Niagara Falls and I have done Niagara Falls in the past I've done a full painting video on, on Niagara Falls way 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 back when when the channel was young but this is going to be something similar what I've done is just taken a filbert brush here and grab some titanium white paint and I'm just 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 take tickling a little bit of thick paint on there just just put a little bit more thick paint on just a little bit more just to give it a real a real glow of highlight just on there and I'm not going to overkill this just just one or two accents of highlight here and there there and here all right let's work on this big waterfall so on the fan brush we've got liquid white titanium white and a tiny tiny smidgen of thalo blue we don't need much because we've already coated the the black part of the primed canvas with some thalo blue so just a little tiny bit just to give it a little bit of a a kick and all we're doing is putting in some basic shapes of where these waterfalls will be this is a big grand waterfall and don't don't worry if i look too zoomed in at the moment on the camera we'll zoom out eventually and we'll pick it back up towards the end of the video but all we're doing is pulling straight down a little sideways shift with the brush and pull straight down because water usually falls straight down and there we go just like so imagine that water just rushing straight off just like that crashing straight off the side of this cliff there now where I live there's a couple of waterfalls that look similar to this and it's and they're beautiful they are absolutely beautiful now do you live close to a waterfall I think I think waterfalls are some of the most beautifulest beautifulest things in the natural world so free and and epic power epic power right so in the middle of this big old grand waterfall what we've got is a, a little sticky out stone so or a big cliff face whatever you want to call it so just some color on the palette knife and we'll put that in and and we'll go straight over that that far waterfall and it'll push it into the painting there this is just mixture of of browns and whites a bit of black in there maybe a bit of red every now and again just vary the colors and if you live close by to a waterfall that's got got paler rocks or sandier colored stones you can paint those you don't have to stick to these colors you really don't there we go now i'm just going to keep doing this i'm going to build up paint i want this i want this stone face to be be really thick and that's the beauty of oil painting when when the painting dries you will get a real thick um texture to the painting it'll be tactile and you can if you rub your fingers across it it'll feel it'll feel like stone and again we'll come back in here on this side this left hand side and we'll push that that waterfall back into the into the painting a little bit of highlight on here i think we'll have some some lighter colors very gentle with a palette knife just very gentle picking out individual stones on this on this cliff face it's where they would be now if you wanted to make this an absolute monster of a waterfall like niagara falls you, you could quite easily do that you really could all you'd need to do is just put a tiny tiny little bit of something on top of these these stones and, um, and you know like a little bit of grass or, or whatever or a small small tree there we go a little bit more white paint mixed in with the with the stone colors there just like that now i use quite firm oil paint and that allows me to put lots and lots of layers of color on all in one go if you were to use a, a really a really thin oil paint um off the palette it, you'd just end up mixing mixing them all together and, and making what 
what we call mud and, and we've all made mud before we all make mud and then probably will do many many times now as i'm doing this i'm just gonna show you some subscriber heart and this is sent in by um a subscriber that's 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 known in the coin collecting field and this subscriber is called 10 bob and they sent me this this painting this well it's this 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 picture of um, of a gorilla that 10 bob painted or or drew it drew and it's absolutely fantastic the expressions on that that uh, that gorilla's face is is amazing and and it beats anything i can do drawing wise it really does and and well done 10 bob keep it up it really does fill my heart with joy when 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 people send me paintings pictures drawings of, of what they've done and created and if you've got anything that you want to send me um it doesn't have to be natural or landscape like i i do if it's anything just send it to me and i'm always pleased to see see some subscriber art it really is amazing it really is well done 10 bob Okay, so on top of these cliffs here, you, I'm just tapping in a tiny bit of green. This is sap green and, and a touch of, only a tiny touch of cad yellow. Only a tiny touch. I don't want to don't wanna brighten this green up too much just yet. And if you want to make these cliffs look really massive and daunting, then you could just leave it as it is. If you want to make them, if you want to make the waterfall look small, you could put something else in that would make, which would give the comparison a little bit, you know, uh, a bit of scale. So you could put a big tree up there, or you could put a tiny tree that's 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 far away, and it gives some scale. It all depends, doesn't it? All depends on what we're trying to achieve. But yeah, we can come back in here now. Now we can come back. Fan brush with the waterfall colours on and just come straight in front of that that cliff and that pushes that one back. There we go. And I think we'll have, you know, lots of splashes down here. There will be a lot of mist and splashes and and churning and and, and swelling water. And so we'll just same fan brush, just a little little, little tiny upward lift, just like so. Easy peasy, eh? We've virtually used just a palette knife and a, and a fan brush on this painting. We'll use one or two more brushes before end of the day, but not many. All we're doing is just lifting up, we're not sliding the brush. We're not, we're not painting a, a barn door or anything like that. Just, just lift up slightly, and then with a different, different motion, side to side rocking. We can create some uh, some churning water just down here. I say I've been moving the camera out as I'm painting. There we go. And that water looks like it's full of life now and and, uh, and full of activity. There, yeah, just like that. See these get things. They just live in your in your fan brush. You've just got to you've got to tease them out. That's what you've got to do. Happy days. Happy days. It does look a little bit similar to Niagara, doesn't it? But not not quite. I went to Niagara with my wife um, back in the late 90s. I, I've got I've got family that live out there. And and it was one of the most... Niagara Falls, one of the, Canada, in fact, is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen, you know. Uh, landscape wise but Niagara Falls wow that that is something special that is something it, it just blows you you can hear it's like a it's like an earthquake and uh, as you're driving up to the place and when you get out and you see its beauty oh just 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 wonderful wonderful I'm just I'm just tickling some tops of these um, these splashes here with a, with a tiny bit of pure white on a and a one inch paintbrush and I'm not going to overdo I'm not going to overdo these splashes I'm just adding one or two in like foamy misty things that are, uh, are splashing back up off the um, off, off the rocks and the riverbed that this waterfall is crashing into but I remember Niagara Falls being really misty really really misty 
has had some rocks into the uh, into the uh, to the water below. So I've double loaded the paintbrush. If you've seen me double load a paintbrush before, all I do is is take a, a rounded brush. This is a half inch rounded brush, and I've loaded it with dark paint. So in this painting, it's it's like Van Dyke brown and a tiny bit of black, and then I've gone through. A light brown colour on one side of the paintbrush only. And when you do the stroke, you get a highlight and a dark colour all in one go. And and it, it kind of blends together as well. And it, it, it's really a fantastic, sneaky way of making m making the highlights and shadows of stones. It, it, it's, it's a, it's, it really is um, a, a, a top tip. It really is. So around these stones, back to the fan brush with a bit of titanium white paint on, and that will pick up the blue that's on the canvas already. And we can put some splashes around these stones and really set them into the painting. Really set them into the painting. Now I wonder if there's any fish that live down here. There'd probably be a salmon or something like that, I, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> Must be a big salmon trying to get up this, uh, this old waterfall. <laughs> there we go. That's it, and we can just, just just put some more splashes down here. Happy days. There we go. We'll add some more more grasses. Now you could leave it as it is. You could cut it down to that if we wanted to, but I'm just going to put some more some more green on on this. I think. So to the fan brush which had the greens on, we'll we'll add a little bit more cadmium yellow that'll brighten up some of the greens, and. It, We'll just add some some more landscape material here in the uh, up top down here. There'll be all sorts. If this is a, a, a warm climate, there'll be all sorts of ferns and and um, mosses, grasses growing around here. And the fan brush creates lots and lots of cracking cracking designs. I think the fan brush is possibly the, the the most favorite brush. You could you can paint a whole painting with just the fan brush. In fact, we virtually have, haven't we? Yeah, we picked up a little bit of red there. But that looks smart. That can be like little flowers. There we go. Possibly didn't mean to pick up the red, but it it works. It works. Now, I've just picked up the script liner brush there and you possibly can't see this until you get close up. I'm just adding some some indications of little roots and uh, vines that are just hanging down. Just a few, not many. Don't want to overdo. Don't want to distract. Putting too much detail in far away is worse than adding, you know, not enough detail when you're close up. There you go. That's a top tip there from your uncle Daniel. We're nearly done, folks. We're, we're nearly done, so stick around to the very end. Anyway, we'll show you something magical. But if you did like this one, give me a thumbs up and uh, leave me a fantastic comment. I do like reading all your comments, and and I appreciate all the subscribers. And if um, if you're not subscribed, please consider you know subscribing. It does help us out a little bit. It really does. Um, again, drop me a line. Show me what, show me what you're creating. I, I, I really do enjoy seeing, you know, people, other people's works of art, and, and and taking inspiration from from photographs that people send me. Really is heartwarming. It really is. Yeah, I've enjoyed painting this painting for you. So let's sign this one. Thin red paint, just down here. There we go. Now let's have a look. At this creation in life. There we go. Magical eh. Take care of the sen. Happy days. <laughs>